Hey guys, this is day two on the home brews cider review um, from uh, my good buddy Alan, uh, aka the Cider Meister, up in Bonnie, Scotland. Now, by pure fluke, we have got a something slightly different. This is a fruit cider. Um, so this one uh, is blackberry, strawberry, and raspberry cider. Um, which forms 12.5%, I think, if I'm reading this correctly. Um, and this has, all it says here is, uh, eaters and cookers. Um, so it doesn't tell me exactly what the, uh, the blend was. It has come up with um, 5.3 on the ABV using the same yeast. I think it looks looks like he's used the um, WLP 775 English cider yeast for, for all of these, so that's, that's good. Um, the OG was 1045. Um, it got down to one double or six. And in the notes, uh, which is brilliant, he um, says he used a, a pillowcase. Um, and he had a bit of a problem with the uh, the press, um, the fruit press. So I believe, as we all do as home brewers, um, we evolve. So instead of having those kind of sacking bags or whatever, you can actually get um, fruit press bags. And it looks like for the future ones, that's exactly what he's done. But he's used the pillowcase. So that's good. Forward thinking. Um, so there we go. I don't know if you can, shall I try this again? I don't know, CY, Cy, um, which is cider yellow. I've kind of kept the glass and I put some more ice in that bad boy because I like my ice. I like it, especially for ciders. It's very rare. Oh, bit more of a hiss in this one. Wow. Oh, I've got some floaters. Let me. Let me get this into the into the glass before they all go everywhere. So this one was a bit more carbonated, which some of you will like, and some of you may not. I think I said yesterday that I really like still cider. Since me and my mate Jim went down to Cornwall. Oh, many, many moons ago, uh, I went down to the Cornish cider farm um, I think it's called Healy's now. Look at that, it's still really clear. Yeah, you can quite see that the glass has frosted up because of the thing, but that is very clear. Colour, obviously, it is not the same colour as a commercial cider with um, black currant. Did I say black currant, straws and raspberries? Now, all of those, believe it or not, can make some quite sour kind of uh, fruit juice. So perhaps this is added to the cider. Anyway, once again, thank you very much. Uh, the Cider Meister for kind of sponsoring these set of reviews by kindly sending these ciders to me. So cheers very much. Thank you, Alan. Drink to your good health, sir. Oh, oh. Yes, so. As I, as I had thought, a lot more bitter. Now, this is interesting because a long time ago, I did a slow, uh, a slow cider. Um, actually, it was a, a slow gin cider because I made some slow gin. And then I took those slows out and they were engorged with a bit of gin. I put them into uh, cider. Um, 
and slows, I don't know if you're aware, but are very, very bitter. And usually what you do with slow gin is you put a shitload of sugar in it as well um, to take the edge off. Um, and I think that's what's happened here. It's, it's given it a, a sourness, a bitterness. Um, now, I'm not sure because it, it doesn't say whether you have to let me know, Alan, but I'm not 100% sure if you did each berry separately and then mix the juices together, or if you kind of mashed everything up, put it all in the pillowcase and then pressed it together. Um, not sure, but on me, quite well carved, this one. Yeah, it's got that overly kind of bitter, bitter thing going on. I think some back sweetening in this would would go a long way. Ooh. The carbonation level is spot on though. But yeah, it's it's, it's strange because. Can't taste the strawberries at all, but the raspberries, I think, are the ones that are coming through the most. Um, and it's black currant. Hmm. Maybe like I'm getting that kind of slow, sort of buckthorn type. Thing. So maybe that's coming from the black currants. Um, the other thing is the black currants have a lot more kind of there's a lot more pith sort of stuff to them. So perhaps that's given that sour taste as well. Too much greenery, maybe. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But hey, 5.3. Fruit cider, but this one is definitely bitter, more bitter. So, for people that like dry cider, um, and I know there's a few of you out there, this one is probably for you guys. Um, this is definitely on the dry side. Um, you couldn't call this sweet, and you'd be very, I think you'd be very hard pushed to call this one a medium one. I'm gonna drink it. It's not, it's not really bad, but. The other thing is this might be better at winter time. Um, I know cider traditionally is a winter drink, believe it or not. Although a lot of people, especially people that drink ice with their cider, like me, uh, think of cider as a summer drink. Um, traditionally, though, it is, of course, a winter drink because after the harvest, sort of end of August, September time, it maybe even into October. Um, once you've got your apples, you wash them, you, you kind of scrumple them, scrunch them. What's that? <laughs> What's that technical term? Scrubbled them? I can't remember what it is. Smushed them. Um, yes, a couple of weeks, maybe a month for a bit of aging on there. So you're looking sort of December time is the uh, the first pressings, the premier crew of cider time. So it is, yeah, that's why people go wassaying in uh, in December, part of the Christmas celebrations, and pour apple juice onto the apple trees. Um, Wassay! Wada! Oh. Yeah, that one is a little bit too sour, but I always have had a bit of a sweet tooth. Um, but yeah, I think I prefer my my side of medium. Um, 
because you don't want to back sweeten it too much. Although all commercial cider, Jesus Christ, they back sweeten the fuck out of it. Um, if you know what I mean, technical term there. Um, but this one, yeah, a little bit too sour for me. So uh, I don't know. Perhaps if you're pressing everything together, perhaps you can uh, boil off some, keep some of the juice, boil off some of the water from it, get your syrup going, um, which will be naturally sweet, and then back sweeten with that. Hey, who knows? I'm not very technical. I'm sorry. Uh, Although cider making is an art, number one, <clears throat> but cider is one of the most simple things, along with wine. Hard to get right, but one of the most simple fermentations you can do. And if you ask the wasps in summertime, who go and nestle into your they kind of bite into your apples and then go and live inside the apples and get absolutely shit faced. It's because the natural yeast has fermented the apple while it's still on the tree or perhaps just fallen down, um, glanced off Isaac Newton's head, uh, landed on the grass. And that's when you get flies and wasps and things in your apples when they're on the grass, um, even if it's there for a few days. Um, they can get a bit drunk, they can get leery, and then that's when they come and sting you. <laughs> Guys, it's been Uncle Jonah here. If you like what you've seen, come back tomorrow, because we've got another four, I think, uh, three or four um, different ciders to try. And once again, thank you for Alan for sponsoring this uh, cider special uh, review on Uncle Jonah's channel. If you want to, I'm going to put a link to the Cider Meister in... Uh, in the below you can go and check his channel out make sure you say hello he's a really nice guy and um yeah we'll see you real soon thanks alan